just defeated this thing on extreme hard mode. We have recovered something valuable. I just defeated this thing on extreme hard mode. I was trying to record it the whole time, but it doesn't matter how many times I try to record it, a hundred times, 60 times, 70 times. I had to delete it as many times as I recorded it. So this was like 100 fights just to defeat this one boss on this enhanced difficulty. On this enhanced difficulty. So here's the thing. This boss was harder to beat than Lawrence the first Vicar in Bloodborne. This boss was harder to beat than the Sekiro boss, the second to last boss. This boss was harder to beat than let me see than um, Resident Evil 2 remake hardcore mode um, the entire goddamn level of the first, the city and the second so here's the thing, when people shit on this game and says this game is not hard, they've never played this game on its enhanced version and fought this boss before on its enhanced version. And enhanced basically means very hard. This game does not have a normal mode. I was thinking this game has a normal mode and this game has a hard mode. This game only has two modes hard and very hard when you first start off the first couple of levels seems normal and easy by the time you get to the halfway point that's when the hard difficulty starts to kick in the first three or four bosses no problem by the time you get past the fifth boss in the enhanced version it becomes basically hard mode er, and then once you get past the tenth boss in in that mode it becomes very hard mode so this boss is harder than Lawrence the first Vicar in Bloodborne. This boss is harder than the second to last boss in Sekiro. And this boss is harder than the third boss in um, um, what, what, Elden Ring. The third to last boss in Elden Ring. Why I say this is simply, I've fought this boss a hundred times. A hundred goddamn times. Where am I supposed to go now? I fought this boss a hundred times. One hundred. I fought this boss more times than I did Lawrence. And I level up to like level 178 with Lawrence. To 178 with goddamn Lawrence. And I still died more times to this boss than I did with Lawrence. I'm more than 120 deep. I'm more than 130 deep with regards to difficulty right there, level and it does not matter <sighs> Your because this game tiring. because this game does not have this game does not have where you could level up your weapons to a even higher difficulty it's either you max out your weapons what I mean you your characters that? and that's it
say this boss here, he's nothing. He's a chump. You're finally awake again. It's not that. It's not that boss. All right. There's. This game is very weird, like very, very weird. You have easy bosses, then you have hard bosses, then you have ridiculously hard bosses for no goddamn reason. This boss I'm just fighting right now, he's weaker than the ones I just fought about three or four minutes ago. Like extremely weaker than him. Like than them. So I'm confused when people say that this game is easier. This game is not easier. One, they've never fought the cannoneer and the blade bearer on the enhanced mode without using DLCs. Let me emphasize this again. If anyone walks off and says this person doesn't know anything, if someone is rocking DLC codes of the characters wearing codes and these are codes various different codes that you could put in it's called code vein and these are basically blood codes so select the character the blood code that comes with the character and the perks that comes with the blood code so these are blood codes and each of them have individual different perks that come with blood codes and you could put them right in here if you're rocking dlc blood codes in order to beat the cannoneer and the blade bearer then that's on you I'm talking about if you purchase this game Code Vein the standard game without any DLCs and you get to the point where you have to fight the cannoneer and the blade bearer on enhanced mode which is very hard mode and then you realize on very hard mode they don't feel like they're on very hard mode they feel like they're on extreme mode. Is that because they are on extreme mode? The very hard mode of the cannoneer and the blade bearer is extreme. Where in the regular, normal gameplay mode, they're actually very hard. So they're the hardest bosses in the game. So when you fight them, up until you get to the cannoneer and blade bearer, all your bosses seem to be just hard until you fight them on normal mode very hard but the thing is when you put the game on enhanced which is the enhanced version which is very hard version the blade bearer and cannoneer are no longer on the very hard fighting mode they're on the extreme so you're fighting them on extreme mode I don't know if that makes sense how I know this is because I try to shuffle through as many weapons and as many um, outfits I was possibly could wear and as many as many as I could find, many different um, variations, many different blood codes, mixed and match, and nothing seemed to work, except one thing and one thing only. So, what would make your life easier and make those hundreds of deaths? Because I died hundred times. Like I'm, I'm talking about, if you died so many times to Millennium Elden Ring, or to Lawrence in Bloodborne or Taken King or Undying King however you want to call him or, or Unforsaken King I like to call him Undying King um, you you basically I wouldn't say you have it easy I say you have it normal because I've never fought a boss in a game that took me this long to beat. And I've fought Millennia by herself. And the secret to Millennia in Elden Ring is your weapons and your weapon stat powers, which is to proc bleed or to proc a status effect on her so that a chunk of her health goes away and stamina. Stamina and proc effects on your weapons. That's how you beat Millennia. And that's how typically you, believe you beat any boss in most of the Souls game. The strength of the weapon. This game, however, does not have that. There's no strength of the weapons. Once you max out your weapons to level 10, you can't add additional effects onto the weapon except um, various different elemental effects. And those elemental effects do not scale once you set them on there. They're permanent as 
what they are. So if you get 50% ice on your weapon, it stays at 50%. It cannot go up. Electricity stays at 50. Um, or fire stays at 25. It doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't escalate. The scaling only happens when you move things around. Um, so you're trying to mix and match and figure out what works, what doesn't, and you're pulling your hair out, and nothing is working. You use slow weapons in order to hit as hard as you can so that it could die faster. That does not work, because the blade bearer moves faster than Sonic the goddamn hedgehog. What works for both of these characters, what will always work for both of these characters, is to have a weapon like this that has a dexterity of B, C, or A. And a dexterity of B, C, and A with the slow status effect on. So this, this weapon is a mobility of C. Will allow you to move at a mobility of C, at weighing at 35, which is not good. There are better swords to use, two-handed, I mean, one-handed swords to use. However, based on physical damage, based on proccing or stamina reduction, which is 43. It's very difficult to pick which whichever one you want. Like say, okay, I'll give a good example. I'll put it on Queen. So on Queen, this is this. This weapon obviously hits less. This weapon obviously hits less. They're both one-handed. But this weapon has more dex and mine. And its mobility is also slow, but its weight is less. So the less something weighs, the faster you are able to physically move using that weapon. Not you swinging the weapon, but the way you are able to move while using the weapon. So that's important. So this would be good for fighting against the blade bearer. However, it won't be good for doing physical damage. He does 71%. Um, 71 less damage that's why I picked this weapon and then this weapon here its mobility is outstanding it's normal and its weight is good its dexterity is B but once again its damage is subpar it's 212 less than the actual damage of the ardent wolf blade so I was looking for a weapon that didn't take a lot out of stamina and I was looking for a weapon that did a lot of good damage and I was looking for a weapon that has decent dexterity as well so the only thing I could have thought of that made sense like I get the damage I want 800 range I get the, um, the weight moving around using the weapon as, as fast as possible as I want I get the, the effect of the weapon as I want and I'm able to destroy the enemy faster as I want so the closest weapon to this would be the blazing claw venom 10 or the art wolf blade slow 10 and why I chose these two weapons because these are the only weapons fast enough to keep up with the blade bearers speed weapon um, using a slow weapon gives open window for the blade bearer to do an extra hit on you or for the cannoneer to get a shot off on a bomb from, me, from him. Um, and I can't use a bayonet because bayonet are horrible when it comes to damage output. These are all the damage. I put slow on the bayonet as well in order to see if I can get that. It doesn't matter what it is, even though it's outstanding with movement, outstanding with dex, outstanding with mobility, outstanding with weight, its damage output is still bad and the stamina requirement is still bad when swinging the weapon. So the damage and the stamina 
is the main thing. Swinging the weapon and the damage output. That's what you need. Swinging the weapon and the damage output. And the dexterity as well. So swinging a weapon, damage output, and dexterity. So stamina, damage, dexterity. Bayonets don't do that. I tried to up one to almost a 10. I got this one to a nine here. Mobility is normal, weight is good, dex is good, stamina, less stamina than Art of Wolf 1, less damage than Art of Wolf 1. Once again, less damage than Art of Wolf 1, but more stamina, you could do it swinging the weapon more, more, more mobility, less weight. So it, when it comes to the bayonet, this would be the closest thing to hitting the enemy in order to get off what you need to get off when it comes to bayonet however there's 234 damage less than that of hard wolf that's no good so even if it gets more seven more stamina the damage it does per hit is 234 less so bayonets are no good when fighting that character what you want to go with you want to go with something that's not heavy and something that's not super light you want to go with a mid-range weapon you want to go with either a halberd or you want to go with a one-handed sword so for the halberd you could go with the impaler which will give you even more damage than that of the um, ardent wolf blade and more stamina however it weighs more which means it takes longer to swing um, but its dexterity is B so it allows you to dodge faster even though its weight puts more weight on you. I, I guess you could say because it put more weight on you, it's harder to dodge with it. But its dexterity and usage and scaling is good. But that's not what I'm paying attention to. What I'm paying attention to the most is its damage output, its stamina reduction, and its dexterity. So if you're not going to use the Ardent Wolf, blade with a slow of 10 then you should use an impaler with a slow of 10 once you max this out to 10 you'll put the slow damage in effect or status effect on the weapon in order to do damage to the blade bearer um, I believe she's weak against pierce um, she takes more damage using this weapon than the other weapons but it has to be slow status effect both the uh, the blade bearer and the cannoneer move fast. The blade bearer moves faster than the cannoneer. The cannoneer moves slower. But if you could slow down both of these characters with a status effect of slow on them, that would make your life significantly better. Me, I struggle all the way till I waste up my last of my um, uh, health recovery. And with the slow status effect, I was able, finally able to figure out the strategy you have to slow them down that's the only way to defeat them is to slow them down either you do a ridiculous amount of damage that you get from dlc codes because i see people do in one shots or you use a mid-range weapon which is a one-handed weapon or you use a halberd types which is an impaler or something that does does not consume a lot of stamina does a lot of damage and has a dexterity of B or C. Once you get that, you should be good. I defeated the blade bearer and the cannoneer using an Arden Wolf blade with a slow of 10. Once the slow status effect kicked in, it was much difficult, extremely difficult for the blade bearer to move around like she was fastest roadrunner. She was moving slow now, like she was carrying a heavy weapon this time. Um, and the same went for the, the Canyoneer. Once I applied the slow effect to him, he moved around slower, which means he was throwing his um, cannonballs slower and casting fire damage slower. So if you're able to, you might be able to manage it with a heavy weapon. If you hit her like two or three times with a heavy weapon, the slow status effect might kick in. But for that fight, the logical choice that makes sense 
is to not do extremely speedy weapons because bayonets are terrible. You have to go with a mid-range weapon, medium weapon. Hammers and heavy weapons are no good. And then light weapons are also no good. It has to be a halberd or it has to be a one-handed if you want to have any chance of success that's decent enough. I'm pretty sure you could do it with a bayonet, but how many more times will you have to die in comparison to if you use a slow effect on a one-handed weapon or on a halberd? So that's it for this video. Um, the only reason I made this was to fight this character. And I deleted the first video, I deleted the second, I deleted the fourth, I deleted the fifth. I deleted probably 15 videos because I recorded them of me fighting it. And then I gave up. And then all of a sudden, I realized I didn't give a damn about the slow static effect until I realized the slow is what works. The slow works on all enemies. And I've never used the slow before because I, I thought like slowing down the enemy just the slightest won't do anything for them, their damage output. But that small window of them moving just slow, just 1%, just 1%, is just 1% more for you to get off one or two more hits on them. Just that small window allows you to get one or two more hits on them, which allows you to survive a little bit longer. That said, I'll just proceed forward and I'll t stop this video. I'll probably beat this boss um, on his enhanced mode because this guy is nothing compared to Blade Baron um, Cannoneer. And like I said to everyone or, or, or anyone who's interested in purchasing this game, um, if you want a challenge that's equal to that of Lawrence, if you want a challenge that equal to that of Sekiro, the bosses, the, the final three bosses in Sekiro, if you want a challenge that's equal to that of Millennia, then you must play this game on its enhanced difficulty mode. B basically, it's very hard mode. And fight the cannon and play birds. There's nobody in this game that is as annoying and as hard as they are. There's no one. There's the last boss who does procs with regards to um, ultimate, uh, like, AOE effects. But there's not a boss in this game that's more annoying than this boss. So yeah, anyone who says bad that Colvin is, is easy, they've never fought the Cannoneer and the Blade Bearer before. On the hard mode, the very hard mode of this game. It's pleasant to admire the scenery. Souls games don't have other modes. They just have one mode, which is very hard. But this game allows you to have the opportunity to take it slow and have the opportunity to make it very pain in the ass for you. So you die a lot in this game. And anyone says, no, the bosses in this game are easy. They're, they've never played this game. They've never played this game. And even when they did play a game, they, they, they took the DLC stuff and DLC codes and DLC weapons and DLC um, perks and then they came back into this game into the standard game and they used those DLC perks and weapons and stuff that are better than the standard game stuff to beat the boss in the standard game or they look up online like cheesers and cheaters oh this is how you do it this is how you one shot the boss and stuff. they didn't figure it out on their own like, there are people who don't figure it out on their own. Me, I sat down, I assessed everything, I looked at everything, you know, and then I went online to see, like, oh, yeah, this, these people are actually using DLC stuff. That's how they were able to beat it, because I'm curious how they were able to beat the Cannoneer and the Blade Bearer so easy. So unless you're using slow status effect, or you're using something that's ridiculously strong, or you're like level 300, which is the max level, you're not gonna beat this boss. You have to either be maxed out level, you have to use the DLC stuff, or you have to use slow status effect in order to beat this boss. Anything else is not gonna work. You're gonna have, what I'm saying is not gonna work because if you get assistance from another player, outside 
to someone to, to help you, you're actually getting a third person to help you. You already have the AI helping you, which already gave you one handicap already. So even with the AI, that one handicap, this boss on this very hard mode still, and even with assistance from other players, that boss, the Blade Baron Cannoneer, are still hard. There have been 50 people who have joined me in this game so far for the past six days. No, five days. For five days straight, I've been trying to figure out how to beat this boss. And I've never used the slow status effect. And I never wonder why I didn't use the slow status effect. I just assumed that it was garbage. I just assumed that slowing them down is not going to do anything because they're fast no matter what. But how the slow status effect works is even if you see it on the enemy or it's applied to the enemy it doesn't proc into effect until a certain period of time and how you would know it proc into effect over a certain two period of time it's not simply about you swinging on the boss and then the effect is now on the boss you will know it when you see it it's because all of a sudden the bodies of the enemy are going to start having smoke rise from their body, white smoke. And that white smoke represents them slowing down because the slow status effect is slowing them down. So even when you hit them like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, the status effect of slow is on them, but it has not built up. In order for it to take effect, it has to build up, which means you have to keep consistently hitting them in order for it to build up fast. That's the only way it work. If you put it on a slow weapon and you hit a one, two, three, it won't get to the its max out capacity of being a hundred percent and then bam, the effect takes effect. You have to use a weapon that builds up that slow effect per swing. That's fast enough that builds up that flow of slow effect for, per swing. And that has to do with damage and that has to do with this um, increase of the, the effect itself. So if you're using a bayonet, it will take you much longer for it to build because the damage output that you're putting into the enemy, um, I guess it gives a certain percentage of slow effect per each damage you hit the enemy. But like I said, putting it on a heavy weapon is kind of pointless because every time you take a swing with a heavy weapon and you miss because the blade bearer so fast and that's one point off of her slowing down you need a mid-range weapon you need a hybrid or you need a one-handed so that's all i got to say with regards to that this boss was actually more pain in the ass than lawrence was in bloodborne now would this boss have been a pain in the ass if i knew that you were supposed to use slow effect probably not probably would have died maybe maybe 40 times most if I knew slow effect was the way it was supposed to go so the first two days I kept using fire and ice and day three and four I kept using fire and ice again but I used electricity and also toxic and then I used the inhibit and stun as well on the you know fifth day as well but then, like, after I used Stun and Inhibit today, I just decided, you know what, I'm never going to beat this boss. I might have to actually use the DLC and cheese, like some of some people who cheese, but then play the game the same goddamn way it's supposed to be played, fairly, um, fight, defeating enemies on this normal mode. using the normal stuff they get from the normal game not the additional stuff that allows you to boost and have more stuff because the bosses in the DLC are much harder so the perks you get from them and the codes are much going to be much more beneficial I didn't want that I wanted exactly what it gave me in the game period so slow was the last thing I tried out today for five days and I was trying to find out well if I'm going to be taking damage from both these enemies how am I going to get both of them to 50 and to 60? And the only way to do so is to add a uniform onto the, um, a transform one of these uniforms and add more um, 
effects onto this. And in this case, this uniform, the winter mantle, was protected with fire because its winter mantle is meant to be protect you with ice, but I also cast fire on it to protect you also from fire as well. But you also don't want just an outfit to protect you from the elements. You want an outfit that could have good resistance to slash, to crush, to puncture, and to blood effects. But the fire would still be at 41. So even though the slash is great and puncture is great, the damage from the fire will still be at 41. So to fight these characters, you need to have protection of high slash, high puncture, high fire, and high ice. You have to. If not puncture, it has to be high slash, and it has to be high fire, and it has to be high ice. There is no in-between. It doesn't matter if the mobility is slow or normal or quick. Your outfit that you're wearing has to have high slash, has to have high fire, high fire, has to have high ice. As you can see, it went back down to its standard um, 70, 72 and um, 62. That's because the effects of fire and ice just wore off. So there's the outstanding with regards to the game. The, the best part of the game is the effects, if you could cast it correctly. So in this situation, I just put, put this effect on. And then now look at my outfit. I put this effect on. I resist now 122 fire and 112 ice. So I'm above 100. Now I'm going to put this on with the effects the, of the, the magic I just put on. The fire is now 105 and let me try it again. The fire is now at 103 and the ice is now at 94. So yeah, either one of these would be perfect when fighting the Blade Baron Cannoneer. If I if I was to use this on other things such as this. 125 is excellent, but 80 is no good. 96 and 75, no good. Still bad. Let me try it again. Increase my elemental type. I'll check my effort again. That's no good. It's no good. Still in one of them is still in less than 100. No good, no good, no good. So the only outfit that made sense for you to have on to fight both these characters, because they both cast fire and they both cast ice effects repeatedly over and over again, both of them at the same time. You're finding them both at the same time. So while you're aiming at one at the front, the other one's trying to hit you from the back. So even if you have support, what's different with regards to this game than other games is that they've made the AI in this game magnificent. Because the AI in this game, once the Blade Bearer hits you like one or two or three times, she automatically takes off her lock on and locks on to your companion. And hits one, two, three, or four times and then takes off the her lock on and then lock on to you again. So the whole time while you're fighting one of your enemies, trying to hit them, trying to kill them, all of a sudden an enemy comes at you from the side and start to hit you. And you're like, what the hell? But like, do your job, AI. Keep that enemy at bay. Your character, Ariel, or whoever your character you're using. Do your job, keep the enemy at bay. It doesn't work that way in this game. In this game, the switch off is ridiculous. Typically in most games when an enemy double team you, they all attack you all at the same time, trying to get a shot in at you. And if you got support, 
sure the enemy would then focus like in most souls game the enemy would then focus on that character until that character is dead not in this game in this game whether you're dead or not or whether you summon a, a friend to help you to fight an enemy or not if the blade bearer decides to lock on to that person that you decide to help you your friend or whoever that blade bearer will hit that enemy a certain amount of times and then she will take her lock on off that off your friend or whoever's co-oping with you to go and attack you after you got hit a certain times and you were stunned so that's how the ai works within this game with regards to the very harder enemies once you're hit by to, at a certain percentage by the enemy you're either stunned or you take crit damage and then what happened is it automatically locks off the enemy automatically takes this lock off from you and then aim towards your friend so you could be very much still alive even at half health even at 75% health or even at 25% health once it does a crit damage on you or a crit critical hit on you it will take off its lock off and then go to your other characters and focus on them and get a significant amount of damage on them and then we'll turn his attention to you again so once you figure out that's what's going on it's the fight is so much easier the problem with that is it's not that simple when there's two of them doing the same thing so once let's say the blade bear is hitting at you at four or five times or make a loss off and aim at your friend the cannoneer who was fighting your friend does the same thing after hitting you, your friend for a certain amount of time, it automatically locks off and start aiming at you. So as you're charging after the finish off the blade bearer, all of a sudden you're getting hit from cannon fire for no goddamn reason, simply because that cannon fire one is not locked onto you. So understanding the switch off between the enemy locking onto you and moving away and rotating around that, that's the difficult part. I use IOS. Um, in order to beat them and why I chose IO is because IO has uh, 30 of course IO's um, attack powers for both of these are standard um, it doesn't go down like this and even though Queen Slayer is probably the best goes to um, overall effects however its core is 10 less and stamina is five less 